Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, yesterday, Formula One released their provisional 2021 calendar. And unsurprisingly, it looks quite like what 2020 was originally destined to look like. Uh, there are some changes. We know that Vietnam has dropped off the calendar yesterday, leaving a slot at the end of April with a TBC next to it, which could be filled by a return to Malaysia, for example, perhaps coming off the back of the Chinese Grand Prix, or one of the European venues that was asked to step in in 2020 to fill those gaps could be asked to make a return in 2021. Either way, could be a great outcome. Uh, we know that the uh, Netherlands, uh, that Zandvoort race that we're all looking forward to has moved from its original May slot into September. And we also know that there are two triple headers on the calendar, something we thought we might see the back of. Certainly the teams thought they might see the back of, but they are back. But perhaps the biggest thing on this calendar, and it's not really a surprise, we've known it's been coming perhaps for some time, but it's almost like the elephant in the room, isn't it? Is Saudi Arabia. Just uh, two races from the end, the 28th of November, will host a street race on the streets of Jeddah at night. I'm sure it'll be an amazing event. That's one of the things that we can't level at this. Places like Saudi Arabia in that region of the world put on spectacular shows, and this will be one of them just before the season closes out in Abu Dhabi. Now, I looked at this calendar and lots of you have sent me messages saying, what do you think? What are your thoughts on, on Formula One going to Saudi Arabia? Is it right? Should they be going? Of course they shouldn't be going. Let's talk about it. And I thought, should I do a video on this? Should I respond to these questions? And then I thought, do you know what? I'm going to stay well clear of that subject because it's opening a can of worms. It's controversial. It's not really my place to get involved. Mm -hmm. It's not my place to get involved. I have no say, I have no influence over this, but I have an opinion like everybody else. Well, then when I thought about it more, I thought, if I don't talk about this, if we don't talk about this, well, then it's just sweeping it under the carpet, isn't it? And that feels like the wrong thing to do. So rightly or wrongly, I'm gonna give you my opinions. I'd love to know yours in return. You won't agree with all of mine. I won't agree with all of yours, but hey, that's okay. These are my thoughts on Formula One going to Saudi Arabia. Of course, the main controversy centres around Saudi Arabia's human rights record, which, look, we know is not great by any stretch of the imagination. That's not even up for debate. There are many well-documented cases of human rights violations, even in very recent times. But does that just mean that Formula One should be steering well clear solely based on that alone? And I'm not sure it's quite that simple. Of course, there's always the argument of sport and politics, well, they should be kept well apart. There's no ever, not ever any reason for the two to be mixing with each other. But that, again, I think is, is too simplistic because a sport, whether it's Formula One or anything else, choosing to go to a certain location around the world, and let's make no mistake, it's all about money, but these sports are also businesses. They need to go where the money is. That's how they operate. But if a sport chooses to go to a certain location, that doesn't have to be making a political statement. It's going to put on a sporting event. But what can happen and what often does happen in these situations is that the host nation, the place that the sport is going, can use the sport as a political statement, as a political football, if you like, to be kicked around, to give off an impression or a vision of their country that may, in some ways, conflict the vision that lots of people already have, like in the case of Saudi Arabia. So does that mean that we just simply shouldn't go and it's a clear-cut case? And I'm not sure that it is. It's not clear-cut because even on the, on the scale of, of human rights violations or behaviours, lots of countries or territories or nations or cultures around the world have different behaviours that are deemed to be on a different, on, on a scale, acceptable or unacceptable in other parts of the world. So I might look at a certain situation and say, that's absolutely blatantly unacceptable. Whereas you might look at something and say, well, actually it's not great, but you know, maybe it's okay. Someone else might think it's absolutely fine. Now, I'm not talking about Saudi Arabia as this example, but I'm talking about behaviors in general around the world are always deemed differently from different perspectives and different people and different cultures and different parts of the world in itself. So there's always this big spectrum of how these things can be judged and that's equally okay. People are allowed to have different opinions of different behaviors and different situations from around the world. We have to respect those opinions. 
So that means in itself that there's always going to be a sliding scale of what's acceptable and what's not, and what one thinks is okay, another won't. We have to take that into consideration. Now there's another point here that if Formula One were to decide, okay, we're not going to go to this country because of its human rights record, it then has to very quickly look at every other place that we go. And just on that calendar alone that I just talked about that was released yesterday, there are a number of other locations that we might consider to have questionable human rights records. So do we suddenly drop them all off the calendar? Now, I'm not saying that that's a reason not to, to take that point of view, because if we are going to take a hard stance on this, that's absolutely the right thing we should be doing. We should be, if we decide that a country has not got an acceptable human rights record, in keeping, by the way, with the policy that Formula One actually has, they've got a statement on their own website listing exactly uh, you know, how that they are going to respect human rights around the world. If they feel that a country doesn't fit in with that, well, yes, perhaps they should be knocking these, calendar, these countries off the calendar, despite the fact that it will cost them money and they might have to look somewhere else. 2020 has shown us that we can find venues in lots of different places, sometimes at relatively short notice if we need to. But the other side to this, and this is, I think, where I fall on this, is that if Formula One doesn't go, let's say, to Saudi Arabia, isn't that like us sweeping that under the carpet a little bit? Isn't that just leaving them to get on with it and to continue doing what they're doing? Because we don't go there, we don't see it, it doesn't affect us almost. Whereas if we do go there, if Formula One, this huge global sporting event that hundreds of millions of people watch, well, if we do go there, we're shining a spotlight onto this country. And yes, we're shining it onto the sport, but it gives us the opportunity with the platform that Formula One has and the people within it, whether it's the drivers, the teams or the sport itself, to perhaps use that opportunity to affect positive change. Now, I'm not suggesting that Formula One can go in and, and, and change the way that, that Saudi Arabia operates as a country. But what we can start to do is draw some attention to the country shine a light on it, which might start to affect change, which may just start the ball rolling in terms of affecting positivity in that region. Formula One could and should be making really strict demands on Saudi Arabia when it comes to the organising and the staging of this event, with very strict consequences if they're not able to stick to the standards that Formula One deemed to be acceptable. That's where Formula One can and should have some control over the hosting of their event under their rules and regulations and adhering to their standards. I think that should be a given. But in terms of the way that country operates, we as Formula One, we don't have any say over that. We can't change that immediately. But if we draw attention to that country and put it onto this global platform that is Formula One, put it onto the world stage. Perhaps we can start to leave some positive legacy behind and it may well be that that starts to bring about change in some way or another. So maybe that's the way we should be looking at this. One of the reasons I was hesitant to even talk about this in a video was that I don't know what the answer is. I think I'm maybe not educated enough around these subjects. I've tried actually just today and yesterday reading up as much as I can around these subjects and it's fascinating when you start digging into it. But even having done that, I still don't know what the answer is, what the right or wrong thing to do is. But it feels to me like Formula One has an opportunity by going to places like this to try and get the conversations happening like we are having right now. These conversations perhaps wouldn't even be happening, or certainly wouldn't be happening on the scale that Formula One has the ability to make them happen on, if we just said, we're not going anywhere near that place, let's sweep it under the carpet. So I'd love to know what you think. As I say, I don't necessarily know what the right or wrong thing to do is, and I don't think anybody can just have a right or wrong answer on this. It's not that clear cut but I'd love to know what you think. So drop me a comment below and we'll pick up the conversation in that chat. And I will go through them, I will read them, I will respond to you because I'm interested as much as anything else to see if we can use this in a positive sense rather than it all being negative. 
surely we have an opportunity here. And then surely if we do, we should be taking it and making the most of it. Let me know what you think.